Greetings, Portal Master. I am Eon, and I have come to guide you on a great journey. Welcome to Skylands. Skylanders is a very special franchise to us 2000 kids. It's one of those kid games that managed to captivate an entire generation of us before it tragically ended in 2016. I got Skylanders Swap Force for the Xbox One some time ago, and if you're wondering why, it's because I grew up with the Wii version, and I wanted to relive my younger years without seeing horrors that no normal person should be allowed to see. I actually reset all of the Skylanders I had in my possession and played through the entire game on normal since I hadn't done it before. Five-year-old me was too scared of it, and to be honest, I don't know what 5 year old me was afraid of, maybe it was the gear golems, I don't know. But after completing the game, I decided to look in the menu and figure out what Skylanders I was missing, because I lost a few over the years, and I was hoping if I saw one, maybe I would remember which one it was. And I just so happened to press the A button on one of these characters, only to be greeted by a wall of text. And that's when it hit me. These plastic toys actually have lore outside of the games. And some of this stuff is surprisingly complex. So let's talk about it. Now, the biggest challenge with this video is deciding who to start off with. Up to Swap Force, there's about 80 playable Skylanders excluding variants, and by the time Imaginators came out, there were over 170, each of them belonging to an element alongside the respective gimmick. So finding the first Skylander of the video was a bit of a task. And that's when it hit me. Who was the first Skylander? Now, you would think that this would be obvious, but good god, this was much harder than I originally thought it would be. So, according to Eon at the beginning of Skylanders Giants, the Giants were the first Skylanders to exist, so that narrows it down to about 8 Skylanders, but don't worry, dear viewer, we are far from being out of the woods just yet. At first, I thought it was Tree Rex, because in his bio it says that he was a tree before the Giants even protected Skylands, but then I read Ninjini's bio where it says that she was from the ancient times before the Archean Empire, which is a really old in Skylanders lore. So I thought it was her until I learned about Hothead's adventure with magical oil, which was not discovered again for another 2,000 years after he jumped into a pit of it and blew up the island where it originated from. And to make matters worse, these guys technically time-traveled when they were sucked into the Archean King's gauntlet, and Eon said that they weren't seen in a long time, so I have no decisive way to figure out how old the incident was when they time-traveled. So, just to let you know, there isn't a 100% definitive answer to who was the first Skylander. But the person that best fits the bill is probably Ninjini, because she's the only giant that seems to have existed before the Archeans. So, let's get started. Any last wishes? So, according to her bio, in the ancient times, Ninjini was the most renowned magical ninja of the time period. But an unknown dark sorceress trapped her in an enchanted bottle in an attempt to imprison her for all of eternity. Well damn, with a setup like that, Ninjini surely must have done something foul to get imprisoned like that, right? Nope, apparently the sorceress was just jealous about her hair, or something. Ninjini didn't accept her fate, however, as she used this time to train and master the dual swords technique before eventually breaking out of her bottle, and making it her mission to help others as one of the first Skylanders. And to make things even funnier, she uses the bottle in combat. That's what gets me the most about this story. It's like someone getting imprisoned in a cage, and instead of sulking, they decide to use the time to get rip as hell before ripping the bars of the cage off and walking out, and then going on to use the bar of the cage like a staff to fight evil as a de facto superhero. Not much else happens with Genie after Giants, but she does make a brief appearance in a book called The Chaos Trap. All in all, she has a very good story. On to the next one. It's classified! Now, Spyrise sounds like a strange choice when it comes to Skylanders, but it's not only because Spyrise is one of the best swap for Skylanders in my opinion, but he's also integral to the plot of the game. Ever since Spyrise was a kid, he wanted to be a private investigator like his father, but said father would be hired by a shady client to gather information on the Cloudbreak Islands, the main location of a Skylander SWAT force, and his father would subsequently go missing. So Spyrise would go to the islands himself in an attempt to find out what happened to him, but every lead he found wound it up to be a wild goose chase. Spyrise was kind of stumped on what to do, until Eon himself left a tip that led him to a hidden lair near Mount Cloudbreak. He managed to find his father and rescue him, but he also managed to uncover a plot to take control of the magical volcano during its next eruption ceremony. 
and once his father was saved, he decided to stay in the Cloudbreak Islands and join the SWAT force before eventually going on to prevent that plot from succeeding. Okay, there's a lot of things we need to go over in this story. Firstly, how all of this connects to Skylander's SWAT force. Now, in the opening cutscenes of the game, we see the SWAT force defend Cloudbreak Mountain from an unknown assailant, which is the exact plot that Spyrise uncovered at the Hidden Lair, which leaves the question of, who was this unknown assailant? Luckily for us, we already know who this is. Chaos's mom. Now, I know this sounds insane to a person who's never played Skylanders before, but just stay with me here. So, in one of Swap Force's cutscenes, Chaos's mom facetimes him to chastise him over the plan to evilize Mount Cloudbreak being a terrible one. But Chaos brings up the fact that her attempt to take over the Cloudbreak Islands failed a hundred years ago, which lines up with the last attack because the mountains erupt every hundred years. This means that the shadowy figure in the opening cutscene was her. But it was also mentioned in Spyrise's bio that his father was hired by a shady figure to investigate the Cloudbreak Islands. Now, this is mostly speculation on my part, but from what I could guess, the shady client who hired Spyrise's dad was probably Chaos's mom. And to back this theory up, Chaos's mom tells him that his plan brought far too much attention to himself, which implies to me at least that her plan was as secretive as possible before the ceremony took place. And to gather the information that she needed, she got a private investigator that wasn't even related to her to do the dirty work. And once she got the information she needed, she kidnapped Spyrise's dad and hid him in the hidden lair. Which was probably hers, and the reason she did this was because 1. He was a loose end, and 2. If she outright killed him, that would raise even more questions. Fortunately for Skylands, that decision would lead to her plan failing. But there's one more thing that I want to go over that I can't really shake off, and that's Eon. Now, the more I thought about Eon's involvement in this story, and the more I learned about him lore-wise, the more I realized how his involvement doesn't make any sense. Eon is the leader, or at least one of the leaders, of the Skylanders. So why would he tip off Spyrise instead of sending one of his Skylanders who can handle the job, like Stink Bomber Trap Shadow since they both specialize in stealth, especially Trap Shadow? This implies a few things to me. Either A, the Skylanders were already stretched thin on the island, so Eon decided to assist Spyrise directly by giving him a tip, or B, Chaos's mom was so powerful at the time that he didn't feel comfortable sending one of his own Skylanders to find her base of op operations and or uncover her plans directly, so he goaded Spyrise into finding out where it was for him. And I think the answer may just be B. So, just for power scaling reasons to try and prove my point, Chaos had access to at least one Fire Viper. These things are extremely hard and extremely strong, and as of SWAT Force, he is the biggest known threat to Skylands, and his mother had access to tens of them. Hell, she may have even given the one we fight in-game to Chaos, and she might even have more hidden away somewhere. This makes me question Eon's motives with the Skylanders, especially when you remember how the light and dark Skylanders seemingly vanished before the games took place only to suddenly show back up in Trap Team. But that's a discussion for another day. From what information I found after the events of Swap Force, Spyrise helped lure a pirate by the name of Frightbeard into a trap by spreading the rumor that the Skylanders' ship had a ton of riches on it. But besides that, that's pretty much where the story ends. This is what I meant by these stories being surprisingly complex. There were a lot of moving parts, yet somehow, all of it managed to make sense and bolster the story of Skylander Swap Force. Whoever writes these stories absolutely cooked with this one. On to the next Skylander. Shoot for the stars! Now, we're gonna take a detour a bit and talk about one of the strangest Skylanders that I own, Starstrike. But surprisingly, her story doesn't start with her, but instead it starts with Chaos, the main antagonist of every Skylanders game. So from my guess, based on the time Swap Force takes place in the most accepted timeline, roughly before Chaos's attempt to take over the Cloudbreak Islands, Chaos must have become aware of the fact that the Skylanders could be banished to Earth. This is basically the game's explanation on why the Skylanders exist on Earth as toys. So Chaos began digging through every scroll and text that he could possibly find in an attempt to figure out how to deliberately do this, because the last three times that this happened were completely accidental. But after digging through texts and scrolls for god knows how long, he eventually found a spell and began to recite it. But midway through the spell, he sneezed. Instead of banishing the Skylanders from Skylands, it instead did the opposite, pull Star Strike to him. Even though this wasn't the plan, he thought that he got himself a new minion. Well, that was until Starstrike put two and two together and sent him packing. This eventually got the attention of Eon, and he asked her to join the Skylanders, which she accepted, and she would make an appearance in two different books. Now, the reason she's the strangest Skylander to me is for two reasons. One, her gameplay, and the other, her story. Firstly, she's the only Skylander, to my knowledge, 
that doesn't originate from Skylands, that isn't a crossover character. And to make things even stranger, she doesn't even seem to mind being stranded on Skylands, even though she's not even from Skylands, she's from space. And secondly, why do most people in the fanbase not know who she is? You would think she would be a far more popular Skylander because she's the only one in Swap Force who can attack mid-air and deflect projectiles, but besides that, the story itself was pretty alright, and it wasn't the best one I saw, but it was serviceable enough. But I think that's where I'm gonna stop things for today. There are still a ton of Skylanders that I can go over, and if this video does well enough, I will definitely be doing a second one. But for now, thank you for watching. Like always, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy content like this, share this around so I can grow as a channel, and I'll see you guys next time.